Okay, so I've opened up a blank scene. In the generation editor, I'm going to right click on the tree, go to add geometry to selected, and we're going to add a trunk. So currently the height of the trunk is at 25 feet. That's a little bit too tall for us, so we're, I'm going to drop this back to something around 7.5 feet. And it's always a good idea to use the, the human there as a gauge for the, the scale of the tree. I'm going to go to the skin tab, and this is where we change the radius of the tree. But there's this little blue line here. I'm just going to lift this right up. And that just basically means that the trunk has got the same radius from the bottom to the top. So if I was just to scale this down so you can see it. So, so it basically just means that the trunk isn't losing any radius as it moves upwards. So it's looking very basic right now. We're going to go over to the displacement tab and we're going to add in some flares. Before we do that, I'm going to click control two on the keyboard, which takes us into wireframe mode. Let's increase the radius flare, the height. I think something around that. That's looking cool. Let's add a little bit of pinching there. Let's add some angle. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. That looks cool. What we're going to do now is we're going to split this trunk into two. So we get two branches going off of this one trunk. So I'm going to go over to the skin tab and this is where we do it. Under the splits uh, tab here, I'm just going to drag the chance all the way up to one, which splits our trunk into two. It's a little bit of a weird way to do it, but you sort of get used to it the more times you do it. I think what we can do now is we can work on adding some roots to the bottom of the trunk. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to right click, add geometry to selected, decorations, and we're going to add some roots. That's looking a little bit mental. We're going to add the roots to the trunk rather, not to the tree. So on the roots, we'll go to I think we'll go to generation first. I'm just going to up this to something like six. Under the boundaries, I'll type zero for the first, one for the last. That looks like that, like that, which looks a little bit weird. Under the skin tab, I'm going to reduce this upper scale, which is stop all that weird stretching. Decrease the lower scale just a touch as well. Just slide that back down, something around there. Under the generation tab, I'm going to move the position of these roots downwards. So in the minus, just like that. I think we have too many of them right now. So I'm just going to decrease this to something like two and three. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Under the root twigs, we'll go to the segments tab. And they're looking a little bit primitive right now. So let's add some radial segments. So radial segments are these, seg uh, are these edges here. And length segments are these segments. So one, two, three across. So we'll increase the, the radial segments first. I'm just going to drag that up. Increase the le length segments as well. It's not looking too bad. That looks okay. Let's add some branches to these splits. On the trunk, I'm going to right click, add geometry and add big branches. Let's go back into wireframe mode, control two, control one, if you want to go out of wireframe mode. And sometimes you've got to sort of click it twice and be a little bit stubborn. Okay, so where this says mode, I'm going to change this to absolute. And during this uh, course, we're going to be using uh, the two modes, which are absolute and absolute steps. And that just really helps define uh, this type of tree. I think we'll turn the roots and twigs off just so we can see what, what's happening. 
And then the number will increase this to two. So we've got two of them there. What we also need to do is go to the generation tab and we need to change this extend parent option to any. And that just basically means that uh, these branches that we create here will continue from where the branches or the trunk left off. Now that's a really, really important option. And this is something usually that you'd want to tick in most cases. And as we're going to be building up this hierarchy, we'll keep ticking this extend parent. Otherwise, if you don't tick that, branches will be sort of spawned off of these branches. I'm going to show you just as an example. And you can see that we've just got a sort of a hole. But if I was to click extend parent, then it continues where it left off. Let's delete that. Okay, on the big branches, let's go to spine and I'm just going to increase the absolute value until we hit around, I think around 18 feet. Just looking at this sort of marker here. I think what we can also do is change the starting angle of these two branches that are coming out of the split trunk. And the way we do that is not by controlling the start angle on the big branches. It's by going to the trunk and under skin, you can change the spread here. Just like that. And like that. And we sort of want to bring these branches kind of into the middle. Go back over to the spine tab and I'm just going to increase those. Just so the starting angle is nice and sort of close to the middle. I think we can introduce some late, so a little bit of noise there. Just helps create these sort of really jerk pieces. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Let's add some twist as well. So under the shape tab, just add a little bit of twist. Not too much as it will start to deform. I think round one is fine. That's looking pretty cool. I'm just going to have a little mess around with the gravity as well. Yeah, I think a little bit of gravity helps. Let's take the start angle back in. Yeah, I'd say that's looking pretty nice. Let's just, I think we can increase the, or decrease the starting angle. Like that, I kind of want to create this nice sort of arched kind of top. Let's drop back the Gravity, I think it's going a little bit too crazy there. Yeah, I think that's looking decent. We'll also change the uh, the radius or the thickness of this of these branches so they're sort of equally as thick at the ends. So where it says absolute and we drag this blue line, let's just drag that up. Something around there so it's consistently thick. Under the spine tab, I think we'll just increase a little bit more lateness there. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, next branch level up. I'll right click on these current branches. I'll go to add geometry to selected and we'll select big branches. This time round, we're gonna to go to the generation tab and we're gonna change the mode to absolute, whoops, or absolute steps rather, sorry. I'm 
let's increase the count to, I think three. Gives us a little bit more. Let's increase the per step count to something like five. It's way too many of them. And they're also starting towards the bottom. We want to shift all of these up. We'll go to the position. I'm just going to slide that right up to something around there. It's looking all right. Let's change the spread. So they're all sort of branching at different angles there. And as always, we've got holes here, so we need to use the extend parent option. So let's take any, there you go. We'll also change the thickness at the ends of these branches. Let's keep them reasonably thick. It's on the skin tab, absolute. Let's just lift that up. Something around there. And you can see here, we've got this nice arc that's looking pretty decent. I think we can actually push these up a little bit more as well. I think they're just, they're starting too low. And just to let you guys know, I've got my reference on my right, sc right screen, so I'm constantly checking that. So I'd advise having two monitors if you can. I just have your reference on the other screen, so you're always looking it's the best way to hit your target. Okay, so let's increase the position. Let's make those higher. Yeah, I think that's looking okay. Let's take a look at this spread. Yeah, I think something around that will do. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's go to the spine tab. We'll increase the gravity ever so slightly. And we'll also add a little bit of noise and lateness. Like so, like that. Let's also increase the length. So on spine, all the way at the top. Let's delete all of these points. Just hit delete. Just gonna shift this up a little bit. Like that. And we'll also increase the absolute length, I think. Just to push those a little bit further. I'm also gonna decrease the starting angle. Let's decrease the alignment. Let's add that little bit of gravity there. And I'm being a little bit fussy about this, but I think I've pushed these maybe a little bit too high up there. Just watching out for my first and last as well. Just having a slide around with this. Just until I get the right result. And like I said, I'm always watching my reference on the other screen, just referring back to it. Yeah, I think that's looking okay. Let's make some adjustment to the the length. I kind of want the the length of these branches to be longer sort of at the bottom than they are at the top. So under the spine tab, which is absolute. So where these branches are starting, which is sort of here, represented by this point, and where they're sort of growing towards the end, is represented by this point. So I'm just gonna lift this up, just like that. And you can see what would happen here if I lift that up. 
So I want them to kind of meet at the same kind of level. I'm also going to turn this down to about 0 0.02. So they kind of all going towards one level there. Under the skin tab, I'm just going to drop the radius, the end of those. Yeah, I think something like that looks cool. So just before we move on to adding another tier of branches, I wanted to quickly stop and just take a look at the reference image. So this next step is probably uh, the most defining part of the tree. It's what sort of gives it this really nice, unique uh, flat top, like canopy look. So you can see here that we've got our nice arc. That's looking really cool. But then it's that next level up where the branches are getting really squished, which gives it this flat top look. So let's move on and do that. And as always, uh, keep your reference on your other screen and just always be looking back and forth. Okay, so we're gonna copy these branches, and paste them and then drop it on top. I'm gonna take the gravity and I'm just gonna move the gravity to about 0 0.06, something around there. I'm just gonna delete the force I've already made. We're gonna click on the forces, we're gonna add planar. I'm just gonna increase the strength up to something like five. And you'll see that that's done nothing. And that's because we need to assign the force that we've just made. And we need to assign it to the allow forces tab. So tick that. So that gives us that kind of look. And that's really cool. Let's also add in, I think, some twist. Like around two, work quite nicely for me. It's looking cool. And we kind of need to be careful about branches here. This can be a little bit dangerous because in the reference image, there's not really any branches that are going downwards. They're all sort of going upwards. So that's something to consider. Usually what I do is I'll sort of mess around with the roll to make sure they're all pointing upwards. Oops, let's go back. Yeah, we can go to there. Mess around with the sweep as well. Yeah, and now they're sort of pointing upwards a little bit better. We're gonna be nice and efficient with the next level of branches. We're gonna copy and paste again, drop it on top. Gives us something that looks like that. It's pretty cool. Just gonna control one, just so I can see where we're at. It's looking pretty decent. I might even increase the length of these, switch back to wireframe mode. So you can see how far out these are going. Sort of playing around with the settings just a little bit. Add a little bit of twist, a little bit more twist rather. And just be careful of your uh, topology, make sure it's not warping. You can get some really weird artifacts from using this twisting modifier. Just gonna drop this lateness down. Yeah, I think that's looking cool. Control one, switching back. Some really nice, interesting look there. Okay, I just noticed that uh, these branches here, 
Actually, the ones before maybe are a little bit too thin. Yeah, I think they're a little bit too thin, so I'm just going to thicken them up a touch. Just at the end. There you go, like that. And you can kind of see as I move this down, we start to lose more branches on the edges. So yeah, I'm just going to lift that up. Something around there, it's looking a little bit better. Here, I think we can do something similar. Like that, we make them nice and thick. These next ones, we'll do exactly the same. We can increase the thickness of these as well. Yeah, I think that's looking a little bit better. It's looking a little bit more sturdy. Okay, so let's copy and paste that. Drop it on top. Wait for it to load. And it looks like this, which is not so great. So I think if we go to the generation tab, I'm gonna type in, let's put this to zero. And I'm just going to mess around with the first and last. Yeah, about 0.9. I think these are way too long right now. So let's go to the spine tab. And I'm just going to drop this down. I'm also going to turn this to, actually, we can leave this at 0 0.02. That's fine. 0 0.25, 0 0.2, something around that. So a lot shorter. Cool. Control 2 to go into wireframe mode. And I think we have too many. Whoops, not 22. 2, 2, 2. So we got that happening. Yeah, maybe we've gone a little bit too last with the radial segments. Okay, that's looking all right. And we just want to add a load of noise to make them look like sort of lightning strikes. Uh, we'll drop off the gravity as well. I don't think we need that. Go down. We'll increase the late there you go so we're starting to get more like lightning type branches which look quite cool let's go to the generation i don't think we need this many i think two by two is fine wait for that to load a moment there you go that's looking pretty good i think the overall it depends on what type of tree you're trying to sort of emulate. I mean, in this particular case, we're we're going with sort of more of a more of a uh, an arc based tree. Some of them do look like this. Some of them are really flat. But if uh, it was the case where you thought, well, maybe this is looking too flat overall, then you could just lift this branch upwards. So let's click on the branch and. When I'm on it, I'm going to right click, go to manipulator and translate. And that just brings up the translation controls just with the one branch, which is really cool. If I zoom out a little bit, I'm just going to lift that up just a touch. So now we're starting to get more of a that arc that we were talking about. Let's undo it so I, so I can show you the difference. Lift it up just a touch and it's just Changes the silhouette ever so slightly. Something around there I think is uh, looking quite cool. Let's go back to these branches. I'm just taking a look at the starting angles. And I'm wondering if we can just sort of widen them a little bit. 
seeing how that looks. That's looking pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's looking kind of nice. So some nice tiers there. And then right at the end, I think we'll add some more branches. And just each time you do this, make sure you've got the extend parent to any. We'll add even more big branches like that. Then these branches will have twigs coming off of them. But just bear in mind that each time you're adding this, you're increasing the uh, the total polygon count like exponentially. So something to think about. And also on whenever I'm dealing with branches and twigs right at the end of the hierarchy, I usually drop all the segments down to one. Because right now we've got 239,000 polygons there that's a lot so if we watch this number as i reduce this to one 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 that's a little bit more sensible i'll do the same for these as well not 41 that will probably result in a crash okay let's check out how many polygons we've got. So we've got a million so far. It seems about right. We could probably be a little bit more efficient and reduce them furthermore, but I think for now that's fine. I'm just going around the model. I'm just checking it out. Seeing what the whole thing looks like. I'm looking at my reference as well. I'm just comparing. And each time you do this, you're going to get a different result. You're never going to get exactly the same result. But that's also a good thing because it means you've got lots of nice different variations to use in your scene. And let's say, for example, we wanted to cover these sort of areas up in here. Then we could go back down. We could decrease the starting angle, like so. So we're still get, getting that nice arc, but closing the gap just a little bit. Yeah, it's not looking bad. If you wanted to, you could individually scale these up. I think that's looking pretty cool overall. I think we can move on now and do the leaves. I'm going to make a slight adjustment to these branches here. So during the course, we've been using the absolute steps mode. So we're going to change that to absolute steps and just sort of keep that running throughout. Wait for that to load. Let's view it again. It looks pretty weird. All of the uh, twigs or branches are sort of pointing downwards. We don't want that. We sort of want them randomly going in different directions. And we've also forgotten to extend the parents. So I'll tick that to any. And that will make a pretty big difference there. There you go. And as we've done with every other branch, we've used the extend parent. That's a really important option. 
Okay, I'm going to select this branch and we're going to add leaves to this one, this one, and this one. We'll start with this one first. I'm going to right click on this node. I'm going to go to add geometry to selected and I'm going to use leaf mesh like that. Currently the size of the leaves are pretty huge, so we're going to need to turn those down. But before we do so, I'm going to load in my textures uh, for these leaves. And I've downloaded these from, from the Speed Tree store. They come with the, uh, the tree models, which is really cool. And I've gone into, so I can show you guys, the Acacia uh, Savannah 1 leaves, Forefront 2, and I've taken this Acacia Front 2. And that should also load in all of the other texture maps as well. The only one it didn't load in was the opacity, so I'm just going to browse for that opacity B. And if you guys have your own textures, load them in. I recommend getting a hold of uh, the speed tree packs because they save you so much time. I mean, whenever I'm moving on to different projects, it makes my life so much easier if I'm able to use an asset that's being developed by someone else. It just saves me that extra bit of effort. Okay, so once we've done that, we've got this Acacia Forefront 2, but it's not assigned to the leaves. So the way we do this is go to the Material tab on the leaves. And where it says Material, I'm just going to assign the Acacia Front 2. So right now, these leaves are pretty huge. And they kind of dwarf the tree. They're making the tree look a lot smaller. So this really does help uh, add scale to the tree when we scale these leaves right down. And I think... Uh, a size that I went with was about 0.2, which is really tiny, something around that. Let's go to the orientation tab. And I think we're just going to align these a little bit more. So they're kind of facing, they're all sort of pointing towards the end of the branches. We're also going to add some variance. And when you see this plus minus button, uh, this is sort of where you add your variation or variance. So if I type something like 0 0.2, we're going to get a variation or variance uh, of 0.536 and plus 0.2 upwards and downwards. So that's not looking too bad. Can have a mess around with the fold as well to see what that's doing. We'll add some variance in there as well, 0.2. Slide up and down on the face. See where we're looking there. It's going to come from above. Looks like they're kind of pointing upwards, that one does. Add some variation in there as well. Just going to drop that down. That's looking pretty decent. Let's also increase the frequency. I'm going to put this to something like 12. We're going to go up pretty high with this, maybe something around 36 or something to really get all of those leaves going up the branches and because they're smaller we'll need more of them that's looking okay and before we uh, add more of these leaves I think it'd be a good idea to press control 2 so we can see the geometry and I'm just going to hit Z so I can reframe and then that allows me to zoom in so I zoom into these leaves and they're perfectly straight, which is not good. So if I can just get this right in the viewport, there you go. I'm going to turn off these uh, branches beforehand so I can see what's going on. I'm just clicking H to disable the nodes. Disable all of them. We're going to go to the mesh tab. I haven't got that open right now, so I'm going to go to Assets and Meshes. You can also access this via 
think via the material, yeah, here. So when you've got the leaf selected, you can select mesh and you can tick any for this. We'll go back to the materials and there's also an option called meshes where it says none and then you can edit the mesh. This brings up this mesh window here, which is really cool. I'm going to drag this all the way into the corner, these points. So we're getting full coverage of the leaf. If I was to do this here, then the leaf would be getting cut off. So we don't want that. And we also have to remember that we're using opacity maps. So the opacity is defining, or the opacity map is defining where this leaf is getting cut out. So it's absolutely fine if this mesh is larger than the actual leaf. Okay, so we want to create some subdivisions. So I'm going to create one here, one here, I think, one here and one here. I think something around that, just so we're getting some nice even spacing. That just allows us to bend the leaf. And then before we close this window, I'm going to send this over to high, medium and low. And now you can see that our geometry has been updated. Okay, so we've got a higher subdivision leaf. We need to bend the leaf now. So under orientation, let's go to the deformation tab. I'm just going to start curling these leaves. I think maybe did that a little bit too much. Yeah, something like that I think looks nice. So add some variants in here again, maybe like 0.1. So they're all getting different core values. There's also this fold option. And this kind of only really works if you've got an edge running through the middle of the, the leaf, but we don't. So we're gonna leave that as is. Okay, let's press control one again and sort of viewing the leaves here. So they've got a nice amount of curl on them. We've seriously uh, increased the polygonal count. So our polygons are at 493,000 tries. So around 245,000 polygons, which is not too bad, but it's, it's getting quite dense. Let's turn everything else back on, just so we can see it. And it's still looking way too sparse. So let's increase this to something like 36. So we've got a lot of them. That's looking a lot better. Let's copy and paste this leaf mesh here. And we're gonna add it to these branches as well. But before we do that, I'm gonna decrease the number. I'm gonna do something around 12. Otherwise it may, may take quite a long time to load. Let's wait for that to load. It's looking pretty good. It's added a nice amount of density there. We've got twigs as well. So let's add the leaf mesh to there. And this is also the reason why I left the leaf subdivision to triangles because uh, in order to bend the leaves, they need to be triangles, not quads. Whereas everything else in the scene can be quadrilated. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. I think we've got too many at the ends of the twigs. We only want something like maybe four. Wait for that to load a moment. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Good time to drink my coffee. I'm just gonna pause the video a moment until this loads. Well, hey, that loaded. Okay. Let's go back to the brighter side. Let's add some bark material. 
to the branches. I'm going to select all the branches here. Under the material tab, where it says material, we'll click import new material. I'll browse to my bark folder, which again is in the Acacia Savannah 1 folder. And I'll load in this bark too. And you might be thinking, oh, this is really annoying that he's that he's using other people's assets. But like I said earlier, it just saves so much time. It's that one less thing that I have to do, which speeds up my workflow. So if you can get hold of other people's assets, then I recommend using them. Okay, so that's looking pretty good overall. If we need to uh, adjust the material, like for, for the leaves, for example, we could go into the Cassia Forefront 2. We could click on the color, for example, and we could just drop down the brightness. Like that. We could go to the bark. We can also drop down the brightness here. But I don't, I don't really worry about this too much because I don't do any of my shading in Speedtree. I do all the shading in another 3D software package. Yeah, I think something around that. And that is more or less the entire tree done. I didn't really do much more than that. I'm just going to show you my example scene over here. So if you take a look at the one we've done and my example scene, they're pretty similar. There's not too much difference there. And you guys are, are welcome to jump in this scene and, and use this, this model here. So the only other thing we need to do now is export this asset and break it down into different uh, parts. So for example, we're going to export the branches out and the leaves as two separate OBJs. Okay, so let's export these assets out. So I'll select all of the branches first and the trunk. We're going to save that out as one OBJ and then we're going to save the leaves out as another OBJ. So I've got a file export selected as mesh. We'll select this wavefront OBJ and on my hard drive, it's on an SSD, I've created a folder called Digital Assets Library. And this is a folder ideally that shouldn't be moved. It should always remain in the same place. Uh, so I've created this folder called Digital Assets Library. Inside, I've created a folder called Trees. If I had other types of assets in here, let's say for example, they were kitchen appliances, then I create a folder called kitchen appliances. Within trees, I put African. If there are other continents, then we could put something like Europe or whatever. Uh, and it just basically means that everything stays really nice and organized. So if we're working on different projects in the future, we know exactly where to go. So let's go into the African folder. All these other folders, I've down, uh, are trees that I've downloaded from the Speed Tree Cinema Library, and they're really good. I've created one folder called Acacia Canopy, jump inside there. I've also created a folder called Leaves and Bark, they're empty. I've created another folder called OBJ, and this is where we're going to save our meshes out to. So you can see in here I've already created uh, two different OBJs, one called Acacia Canopy 1 Main, and one called leaves. So I'm just going to call this one just as a test, uh, but I'd recommend using this type of naming convention. I'm going to call this test underscore main underscore one. I'm going to click save. I usually skip the texture save, so that's not saving out any textures. I choose hierarchy, zero to all. Swap Y and Z and set the scale to 1. So we'll just wait for that to export. That's done. And then we'll select the leaves. We've got a file. Export selected as mesh. And we'll call this one leaves. Exactly the same options. Click export.
So if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about uh, the process uh, between Speedtree and Houdini, then I've got a course called uh, Create an Atmospheric Environment, which is a really great opportunity to learn these sort of ins and outs of the entire workflow. So we showed you how to model uh, a tree in Speedtree. We're going to show you the rest of it, so the shading, the look development, uh, the rendering, instant instancing, scattering, uh, Redshift proxies. So there's uh, a hell of a lot of information in the next course. Um, and it'd be great to have you guys over there.